Good afternoon, Bermuda. The One Bermuda Alliance wants a Bermuda that is safe for all its citizens. And we are committed to working with the police and communities across the island to make that happen. But we have to be very clear about the challenge before us. The rise in gang violence over the past three years poses one of the most serious threats to our way of life. It challenges the law and order of this country. It cuts up the island into territories. It makes people feel unsafe. Parents are worrying about their kids and their children. People at public events wonder if gang violence will erupt at any moment. Gang violence is tearing at the heart of our communities. Young children are being recruited in these gangs, and the shootings are killing our young men. The fear is real, and the pain that our communities are suffering, the families, is real. We need to change this. We need to do better than what we've been doing, Bermuda. This week, the One Bermuda Alliance will speak to our public safety challenges. Today, I've asked Jeff Barron, our National Security Shadow Board spokesman and an OBA candidate for constituency number 21, to speak about an approach to the challenge of gangs, an approach that has been proven to work in other jurisdictions, and which we believe can be successful here in Bermuda, adapted to work here for us on our loved island. And so with that in mind, I'll turn it over to Jeff as he will come and speak to you. Thank you, Craig. Thanks, Bob. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> All of us know that violent gang activity has had a devastating impact on our entire community. Since the spring of 2009, there have been over 300 shooting incidents, more than 70 people hurt, and over 20 Bermudians killed. Each time there's a shooting, we are affected. With each shooting, everyone in our community feels a bit more threatened, a bit less safe, and a bit less secure about Bermuda. For some members of our community, particularly young Bermudians, this rise in gang warfare means that they can no longer leave their neighborhoods without fear of being physically attacked or even shot at. Employers understand this, and they now routinely ask job applicants whether they can travel to all parts of the island. Even if they are not part of a gang, gangs are affecting the employment prospects for many Bermudians, particularly the young. It is affecting their freedom to gather, to travel. The government has been promising to address the issue of gang violence, but we are still waiting to see a concrete plan put into action. In preparing for this press conference, I reviewed government statements on gangs and gang violence over the past year, and what I found is telling. In November 2011, more than a year ago, the government in the speech from the throne promised a Bermuda ceasefire initiative. A month later, National Security Minister promised Bermuda would roll out its own Operation Ceasefire program by April or May using local gang mediators. He was also considering a peace summit on gangs. In October, just two months ago, the government was still investigating on how to approach the gang problem. And last Monday, the government said a comprehensive strategy for gang mediation was on the cusp of full implementation. Let's take a step back and think about that. The government, more than three years after gang violence broke out on the streets of Bermuda, is telling Bermudians that only now they are on the cusp of implementing a strategy to deal with this situation. It's not good enough. There continues to be a major disconnect between what is happening on the streets and what is happening in the halls of government. There has been no urgency on what is, without question, an urgent situation. The government has been telling Bermuda things are happening when they are not happening. Sources told us last month that the Interagency Gang Task Force had gone nearly a year without meeting. And just last Monday, the National Security Minister told Bermuda that 30 people had been trained under a program called Operation Street Safe. The inference here being that these people are now on the job making streets safer. But we know this is not the case. We know the trainees' work stopped with the training, that no deployments have been made, and the Street Safe program is, in effect, at a standstill. The people of this country deserve better. The threat presented by gang warfare is a threat to our way of life. It has a power to topple our economy. It has a power to retard the development of young Bermudians. One only needs to go to YouTube to understand how deep the situation is. 
to see our Bermuda children flashing gang signs and teens boasting about killing rivals. Bermuda is in danger, and we have a government that has been asleep at the wheel. So the first point I want to make in this press conference is that the One Bermuda Alliance views gang violence as a major threat to the country and that we will approach it as a national emergency. This is a challenge that requires short-term solutions with long-term solutions, short-term actions with long-term solutions. And today, I'd like to talk about the short-term. And it means doing whatever it takes to stop the shootings and to stop the killings. We believe the best first step in achieving this is to bring Operation Ceasefire to Bermuda. This is a police community initiative that has worked in some of the most violent cities in the United States. For example, in Cincinnati 2007, after Operation Ceasefire's first meetings with gangs, homicides fell by 24%. In 2008, they were down by 50%. In 1990s Boston, Operation Ceasefire was associated with a near two-thirds drop in youth homicide. The impact of Operation Ceasefire is beyond dispute, but how does it work? In a nutshell, it reaches out to gang members with both a stick and a carrot. The stick means warning gang members that violence will not be tolerated, and that every legal lever will be pulled to disrupt their lives when it does. We know that many Bermudians, many young people, want a safe way out of gang life, but feel trapped. And this is where the carrot is offered. The Operation Ceasefire Working Group, which is community workers on the street each and every day, in close contact with gang members and their families, will be there to make help, make it happen. Operation Ceasefire is the right program at the right time for Bermuda. Police have identified gangs, gang members, and their turf, and this is essential information for this program. In addition, Bermuda has a fantastic community of social workers, active clergy, and community activists who can be enlisted for a helping hand side of the approach of this operation. And at the moment, as excellent as some of those community resources are, the approach is fragmented. There is no overall leadership, no guidance to coordinating work on the social problems that give rise to gangs and crime. Under the umbrella of Operation Ceasefire, those groups can begin working together, all pulling in the same direction to defuse violence and pull gang members out of a life that holds no real hope for the future. The police community dynamic that Operation Ceasefire develops would be new to Bermuda, but it makes sense. The police are doing all they can with the resources they've got, and we're encouraged by their progress over the past year. But they're simply dealing with what society sends their way. It is time to join up these two halves of a solution. It is essential Bermuda starts working with more cohesion, more teamwork on this national challenge. The One Bermuda Alliance understands this. The police alone cannot do it. But Bermudians working together can. Thank you very much. I don't have any questions. Do you think the fact that the government doesn't have enough money as it says to pour it into the crime and police and the other judicial aspects is a part of the, the problem? Yes. What would you do about it? Again, we, the OBA, the One Bermuda Alliance, has made it very clear that our economic policy would be much different from the current government's. Um, it's definitely impacted. And you'd you favor the police when it came to requests of funding? The, the Operation Ceasefire model favors both the police and the social networks. And that, that's really where we're failing. Is it an expensive exercise? Operation Ceasefire? If the OBA had to make a choice between spending some money and allowing 20 more Bermudians to die, we're going to spend the money. Yes. Um, given that your short-term um, operations are successful, what would you implement in the long term? That's a great question. Again, the, some of the more uh, sustaining uh, effects of Operation Ceasefire has to do with the social commitment that we're going to make. Um, and again, in our in our uh, crime platform that we rolled out, we discussed um, you know how we're going to invest in the youth organizations. Uh, really touching those uh, in the, in the, uh, with our partnerships in the community. Uh, so with the clergy, with uh, youth volunteer organizations, uh, with NGOs, uh, really uh, begin to build out uh, a successful partnership with them uh, and create collaborative solutions with the community. Can I suggest um, using sport as a good outlet for you? That's precisely what uh, one of our ports, and that's a great suggestion, yes. Do you want to be part of the solution? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now look, s sports, again, are, are, is obviously very popular in Bermuda. Uh, and we need to reach the kids who are, you know, in, in the uh, sporting age. So whether it's football, whether it's cricket, uh, even baseball, we need to be uh, make that a part of this. Make make the message 
uh, clear. We need to make gang activity unattractive.